As a paid informant of the CIA, Manuel Noriega provided vital information to the United States about Latin American countries. In 1983, Noriega promoted himself to the rank of general and became de facto leader of Panama. Noriega had come to power in Panama with the support of the United States uh, as a hedge against communism. But as the Cold War ended, we began to see that Noriega was, was making an awful lot of money at the expense of a lot of American lives through his narco-trafficking activities. When the 1980s came to a close, General Noriega was accused of drug trafficking and committing crimes against his own citizens. The partnership between the U.S. and Noriega reached its breaking point when Noriega's Panamanian Defense Force shot and killed an American Marine officer. The first shot went through the back window of the vehicle into the back of the individual that was killed, and then another uh, individual in that vehicle was wounded in the leg, and essentially that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Last night I ordered U.S. military forces to Panama. No president takes such action lightly. Operation Just Cause, uh, December 20th, 1989, approximately 13,000 U.S. forces under the command of the 18th Airborne Corps will invade the Panama Canal Zone to protect the canal zone and the American access to that canal zone, obviously for commercial shipping, military purposes, and to support democracy. Operation Just Cause was swift and lethal, and within hours, the PDF protecting Noriega had been neutralized. Unfortunately, as soon as the operation was launched, General Noriega managed to escape and go into hiding. In those situations, he was in charge. It was his thinking where he wanted to go. I'm going from here to here to here. And he had places all the way up in David. He had places in Cherokee. He had places uh, around Panama where he could uh, move through the night. With Noriega on the run, the United States launched an all-out manhunt for his arrest. Leading the search was the 470th Military Intelligence Brigade. The 470th MI Brigade was the unit that was stationed in Panama, and they had several subordinate units, one of which was the 746th MI Battalion, and their human company, Charlie Company, had a first sergeant uh, who was a staff sergeant at the time. His name was Tony Bonilla. My most rewarding assignment was Just Cause. I was assigned to advise uh, General Cisneros on intelligence information, on uh, key PDF individuals and collaborators. In addition to that, my job was to debrief these guys or interrogate them for tactical intelligence during hostilities. Bonilla was able to, to get a lot of insight into the capabilities of the Panamanian Defense Forces and relay that information to planners uh, back at U.S. Southern Command in Florida as they were going through the throes of planning the invasion of Panama. What the 470th found is that their units tended to be very heavy in signals intelligence. And what the operation called for was more human intelligence. So all of these signals intelligence personnel that were in the MI battalions they basically had to uh, jump over and do tasks that they weren't specifically trained for. I think I demonstrated that indifferent to your rank or your position, you can make a difference. It's not just about the bullets, it's about your brains. And uh, we were able to, to use that. Like Tony Bonilla, Felix Aponte demonstrated the value of military intelligence when he was handed an assignment outside of his normal duties by his G2. His translation of a letter written in Spanish could help bring Noriega to justice. One night, he walks in looking for me. He says, I need to translate this because we're going to send it to the National Security Council to read it before this thing gets out. And I said, OK, a little more detail. It's in Spanish. I need to translate it to English. And it's going from the Archbishop, a craft, to the Pope. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is big. Aponte's translation stated that Noriega was guilty of abominable crimes, and uncertainty over his future has morally impeded a peaceful return to democracy. Colonel Morgan takes in, ships out to the National Security Council, pointing to the Pope, you know, he's isolated. We don't want him here. We did take him, but hopefully he'll, he'll leave soon. Once providing sanctuary for the general, the Vatican announced Noriega as a common criminal and refuted his asylum. 
On January 3rd, 1990, Noriega surrendered to U.S. troops. I remember Thurman walking up to uh, Steiner, you know, four star, three star, and saying, we got him, buddy, you know? We got him, my friend, it's over. General Noriega was extradited to Miami to stand trial on cocaine trafficking, racketeering, and money laundering. He was convicted and sentenced to 44 years in prison and forced to pay the Panamanian government $44 million in restitution. Just cause was the right term for it. It was the right cause. His people were suffering a lot during that time frame. It had to end. We met our objectives and look at Panama today. It's thriving. I mean, that's where people want to go retire to. Operation Just Cause liberated Panama from a misguided military strongman and aided the economic strength of a now thriving Latin American country.